Hello everyone, this will be part one from what I expect to be a two or three part series where I show you how I designed and manufactured an automation for controlling the main water supply valve in my apartment. The first part will be related to the mechanical construction while the second part will likely be related to the electronics needed for control. So first of all the reason you might want to automate this is for protection in case of failure. You can detect the water leaks using some sensors and close the main water valve to prevent extensive water damage. You might also want to conveniently turn it off remotely if you go on vacation for extended periods of time, stuff like that. Now you might say there are ready-made solenoid valves that run on various voltages and you can use one of those to replace an existing analog valve and at that stage you will just need a relay to turn power on or off to the valve. And that is certainly a very good option for those that are building a new installation. You can certainly plan for that and install one of those solenoid valves. But in my case, I would need to shut off the uh, building main water supply and get a plumber to install the valve, which is something I would like to avoid. I'm also aware of servo type accessories uh, that connect directly to Wi-Fi. Uh, they clamp over existing valves but they seem to be designed for the lever type valves so they wouldn't work for the style of valve that I have installed. The technical space is also quite small so it would make the life of the plumber quite difficult to get in there and install the new valve. So instead I opted to design this uh, servo mechanism that would go on top of the standard valve and uh, actuate this without requiring any modifications to the piping. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times, but you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay. They also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining, various parts, so you can have an entire prototype built using their services. Check out their website linked below. So the first step for me was to get one of these uh, spare valves and I needed it to be the exact same model. Luckily I could find an identical one, it's from this company called Hertz uh, Austria and this is the part numbers. So now I could just take measurements of this and recreate a 3D model in Fusion 360. I could not find a 3D model for this specific model from the manufacturer although it does offer models for other uh, part numbers. So uh, what I did was to recreate this. Uh, it didn't take too long because I was only interested in the rough outside dimensions where I would clamp my mechanism and not the intricate uh, details of the inside of the valve. So my plan was to create some form of a mount or holder thing that would keep a servo motor aligned with the valve so I designed this two-piece model which basically has a holder for the servo motor and it clamps around the valve body. Since this was designed specifically for my type of valve and the servo that I use, you might have to make changes to this if you plan to reuse it, but I will be providing a link to the uh, design files for this in the description of the video. I also thought about using some kind of DC motor or um, some gears to increase the torque but that was just going to take more time to design, more time to tune and in the end uh, it meant I had more possible failure points. I also designed this small adapter piece that goes in the middle on the valve shaft and provides some kind of interface uh, to a servo horn as well as having the end stop pin to uh, prevent the valve from spinning more than it should. The next step was to 3D print these and as you can imagine I had to go through quite a few iterations of these to optimize the way they print uh, on the 3D printer bed or the way they go together but after a few revisions everything seemed to fit nicely and I had one of these MG996R servos or rather a clone of an original servo for my uh, from my RC projects and this particular model has a rating of uh, up to uh, 11 kilograms of force per centimeter according to the data sheet and uh, that depends on the voltage supply and I thought that's going to be enough to rot rotate this valve and after assembling one of the first prototypes and installing the uh, uh, servo I powered uh, this from uh, one of my servo tester modules and the servo was able to rotate the valve when powered from 5 volts. It was taking about 2 amps, but that was something I could manage since uh, it would only need that for a very short amount of time. 
As you can imagine, I was pretty excited at this point. I took the whole contraption home. I enthusiastically installed it in the tight space on the actual water valve that I plan to control. I powered the whole thing up at 5 volts, same as before using my servo tester to generate the drive signal. But this is when I suddenly realized things are not working as planned. The servo wasn't providing enough torque to spin the actual valve. The two valves are identical, uh, but then I quickly realized that while the system was working okay on my workbench with the new um, shiny valve, it was a different story with the, with the valve that was in operation for a while and was likely already gathering some residue on the internals. And I needed more torque, but the uh, poor servo I was using was starting to release its magic smoke when uh, bumping the voltage up to 6 volts. So the next step that I did was to go online and order myself another servo, one that was rated for 25 kilograms, which was double that of the original servo. And I was uh, very pleasantly surprised that this new servo had almost the exact same physical dimensions as the old servo. So I was able to make this fit inside the same holder. It's just a little bit taller and uh, that just requires uh, just longer screws where the two pieces clamp together uh, but that's an easy fix and the result is that now uh, the mechanism has enough torque to spin my crusty valve Uh, and if I were to order again, I would probably just get the 30 kg rated servo just to have more headroom because you never know how crusty the valve might get over time. But when I get to designing the control electronics, I also plan to run this routine maybe once per month where at some point during the night it would cycle the valve on and off just to prevent it from getting seized by sitting in one spot for long periods of time. And I really like the overall design of this uh, clamp. I mean, it's it's strong, it does the job, and uh, just by design, the servo doesn't even need any screws, although I put them in because of the way this clamps in and, and puts pressure on the servo. It just sits there, uh, pressed against the valve shaft adapter, and I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but there are a few things that I would like improved. I was thinking, what happens if the servo fails? and then I need to manually get in there and close the valve. There is no way for me to quickly take this off. I mean, I, I will have four screws to take off and those will probably take me like five minutes to undo if I find the right screwdriver. And then when I get the clamp apart, I don't have any knob to manually uh, spin the valve. So I need to think about a way where I use maybe just two screws on one side instead of four and I have some kind of clamp built into the uh, plastic clamp here so that it doesn't use screws anymore. So in that case I would have just two screws to remove in case of emergency and uh, I also need to put in maybe some grooves on or threads on the valve adapter piece so that when I remove this I could just spin that by hand in case of emergency. So these are likely some upgrades that I will be doing to the 3D model of this. Uh, but if you have any other suggestions that might help, please let me know in the comments below. I have also thought about just using the original um, handle on the valve and just design the whole mount around this, but it would just have to uh, be too wide and it would take up too much space. Um, and limited. I have limited space, I obviously showed that in the beginning of the video, so kind of want to avoid using the original knob in there and designing the whole clamp around this. Overall, I'm uh, quite happy with the results so far, so I think I'm going to be going forward with this servo. And uh, in the next part in this series, you'll probably um, see me design the electronics to drive all of this. And I'm sure you've spotted the analog water meter in there. I also want to read that. So in the control electronics for the servo, I'm going to be having an ESP32 likely and uh, some kind of read switch to read the analog uh, meter as well and report that to Home Assistant. That was all for today. I'm looking forward to some feedback in the comments. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed these videos, you can help support the channel with as little as 1% per month via Patreon or you can just hit that like button, which is free, but still helps a lot.